Oh, Carl, the, sh the Big Shine is dirty again, and it really annoys me. I hate when my uh, Big Shiny gets dirty. <laughs> it's, it's, you know you're going to have a rough day when you wake up and your Big Shiny's dirty. <laughs> Holy shit. What a start. What a start. Speaking, just, like, just ram it. Speaking of, <laughs> just, just ram your ass into it. That's the Mario way, in it? That's how he opens up. Oh, man. So, um... At the time of recording this, I believe, um, episodes haven't started going live, but the announcement of what you're recording has, yes? Uh, yeah, so I've, like, cheekily just, like, mentioned every now and then, uh, during streams and stuff, like, oh, yeah, we, we're playing Mario Sunshine now. Like, this is the next thing we're recording. Any feedback so far? Any uh, like, queries, like, why we're not playing the other games that are in this collection? Surprisingly not. People have just been like, oh, yeah, cool, like, Mario. People are just excited to see something Mario with this new collection coming out. That's fair. So I was wondering because uh, the Mario 64 has a quite a rabid fan base. Well, I uh, yeah, because like obviously Sunshine is the least popular of the bunch. Yeah, it's like the redheaded stepchild of the the 3D Mario era. It really is, and I was expecting people to be like, "Oh, cool!" So like you're gonna go through them all, and when I say no, it's like, "Oh, like well, so why, why Mario? Why one? Mario Sunshine then? That's the shit one." Why are you not playing the bad one? It's like. I, I, I'm aware that the Mario fan base is um, very dedicated. Not as dedicated as the Heracross fan base, but it's not <laughs> Lucas, it is a sign of wealth and power. Take the pineapple. <laughs> Hurl it into the ocean. That's I all of that. I Would you... I, I'm just going to put this out there. Would you buy a game that was entirely just dicking around with physics? Yep. Now, do you know the Euphoria engine, the one they used for Grand Theft Auto 4? Oh, yeah. I, would you buy an entire game that was just that? Well, Carla did. It was called Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Oh, man. I, I know that like, Grand Theft Auto V on paper is better, and it's like sold a billion copies. The fact that it didn't have the same engine, though, really annoyed me. Because mm. the Euphoria engine was so good. And by which I mean it was really bad. Yeah. I will never forget when I Grand Theft Auto IV first came out, I went around to a mate's house who got it, day one. Mm. And I was watching him play it, and he walked across the road and got hit by a taxi, and Nico Bellic crumpled on the bonnet, <laughs> and, just, and then rolled down on the floor, and then just sort of went, I fucking hate this candidate. And I love I went, those moments where, like, Nico would fall down, but then like, slightly get knocked by something else, getting back up, and just completely just cannonball down the fucking street. All those ones where you get hit and you just like do that weird stomping walk where your character's falling over where you <laughs> yeah. can still stay up. And it's like just looking at when you knocked over that piece of fruit with the water. That's impressive. It doesn't look it impressive. Is. You are literally, you are nudging a piece of fruit. But the fact that it has independent physics and mm. reacts to the water in a semi-realistic way. That's impressive, especially considering like how old this game is. It's like nearly 20 years old. And my mind is still blown when you said this is not this is not being visually revamped at all. Uh, yeah, pretty much not, which is crazy. It looks, it looks really good. It looks really clean. That's the power of the GameCube. It is, man. And I think, so like, it... yeah, they've, they've done a couple of things. Like, the, the heat effects look a little bit more noticeable and a little bit cleaner. But other than a tiny bit of cleanup on the graphics, like, nothing's really been altered. Just a, like a lick of polish and um, a very small lick of polish, yeah. It makes you forget like, how powerful the GameCube was. It still blows my mind that the GameCube version of um, Resident Evil 4 looked better than the PS2 version. Mm. Because in my head, it's like, oh, the Nintendo console was weaker because Nintendo usually made the not as powerful console, but it had the better game. So it had like the, well, it was Nintendo, it was the Nintendo console. Yeah, and that's so the especially idea that, since like the Wii. So it's always strange to me to think that for a while a brief snippet of gaming history nintendo had the most powerful console i believe the, the xbox was more powerful but again playstation and uh, gamecube were out for just a little bit of time independently on their own and then xbox came in just like about halfway through the gen didn't it uh, i think it was maybe a year after the ps2 so there was like a brief period of time where playstation uh gamecube was the most powerful console that's a strange period of history uh, the fact that yeah like PS2 kind of was, like, the, the Wii equivalent in that gen of, like, oh, the weak, like, cheap console that appealed to Wait, everyone. It plays fucking everything, yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, uh, looking at this game, it's, like, it looks fucking awesome. Like, some of the games on Genki, like, they were real lookers. Oh, they were, yeah. Like I said, Resident Evil 4 looked better on um, uh, PS2. And I think it's Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube still holds up. Um, Mostly. 
Right. There's a couple of games that I feel hold up. Like, this one definitely holds up. It's just, like, the power of the art style. And as you've said, I think, in the last episode, or last couple of episodes, it's like, it feels so good to control Mario. It does. It always does. Like, that's one thing Nintendo have always got right. It's like, doesn't matter which Mario game you're playing, like, it always feels pretty good to control. And every now and again, you'll go back to that. Um, I'm not sure if it's Miyamoto who does it. But it was a great speech by one of the people who helped make the very first Mario game. Mm. And they talk about how the very first screen, that iconic first screen where it is the, the row of bricks, yeah. the Goomba, and the um, the Power Mushroom, the Super... What are they called now? Technically, uh, The Super Mushroom, I believe. Super Mushroom, yeah. I always forget they've got an official name. It's called the Mushrooms. Yeah. And they talk about how that first screen took them months to develop because they wanted to teach players that the mushrooms are good. Yeah, so and, um, if people don't know, like, yeah, the, it's quite um, well known, like, oh yeah, the first bit of the first level in Mario, like Super Mario Bros. 1, it teaches you how to play the game without telling you anything. Yeah, but that, the fact that, first that screen... the mushroom is almost completely unavoidable. Yeah, they made it so that there is almost no way to avoid that mushroom mm -hmm. um, without getting it, and it teaches you that, oh, mushrooms are good, and in the space of one screen, you are taught how to jump. You are taught how to avoid enemies, and you are taught how to get your power-ups and your bonuses. Like, you are taught every mechanic in the game in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that is fucking incredible. And I feel like, I, I do, am I doing something different here? Like, I'm not supposed to. Yeah, I was thinking, like, you've, been, you've thrown a few bombs, like, yeah. the rule of three. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think I've hit him, like, four times. And it, the, the camera zoomed over towards this. Oh, God. That one's, like, golden. Ooh! Oh, get paid, get paid. Get that dollar, Mario. Maybe you got to hit the uh, the mole specifically. Little mole. Little moly mole. Ooh. Midoriya. Oh, God, what am I doing? No. No, Mario. Yeah, Don't go for a slip and slide. You just keep running into the explosion. But, yeah, that the that great speech. Like, yeah, the, you are taught how to play the entire game in 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Can you, think of a, can you think of another game that even managed to pull that off? Oh, there we go. I think you just didn't get him directly. Maybe the hitbox wasn't getting him. Maybe, yeah. Because I think a few of them were just hitting off to the side. Right. Oh, God. Oh. oh, getting hit during a cutscene, man. Yeah. <laughs> I just Let's come explore. back out of the cutscene and Mario's like, oh! Explore this island a little bit more, then. Uh, well, oh, okay. we'll go back to this island on the next shine, and we'll go explore the park. There we go. Got it. But this one is just like the little secret course with... The really weird background art style. It looks like, like Yoshi's Island-esque. Oh my god, this remix oh my is god. amazing. Yeah, I love the these like, acapella remixes. That's fucking awesome. Why does Mario have such good music? Oh, it's amazing. It's so godlike. Um, like the one that was I like a lot. And it's... it's I, it's, I want to say it's iconic, but it's, it's well known. Oh no! Oh, oh. Mario's like, I'll take it. Oh, just... oh my god, he's entering the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, like his ass just... is entering the atmosphere. Just re-entering like Master Chief. <laughs> just his anus is on fire. But um, it's the one where um, in Mario 64, where you got that staircase, if you haven't got enough stars. Oh, the stair yeah. The staircase that goes forever. And the music always sounds like it's forever going up. Yeah, the music constantly sounds like it's increasing in pitch and speed, but it isn't. It's like um, uh, audio illusion. Yeah, and it's so cool. And whoever designed that music is fucking incredible. Cause that, that's so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I rem that still sticks out in my head because it's like duh, 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 duh. it sounds like it goes on forever, just like the staircase. Yeah. And uh, you described it perfectly. Like an audio illusion. Oh god no. Well, I think that's what it is described as. But and there is obviously an official term for it. Um, but if, if people don't know, like, go lock it up because it's so interesting. You listen to that music and go, no, that's still going up. But obviously, it would have to exponentially go up, like, to the point where the music had to reach, like, an end point. And it doesn't. And it never like does. staircase. And there is a, there's a very obvious cut in there somewhere. And if you listen, you can hear it. You mm. can hear where it loops. But it's very well hidden when you're just casually playing the game. And it's one of those pieces of meat you're only probably ever going to hear for about 30 seconds as it is before you realise I can't keep going up this hole. Yeah. All these stairs. Like, hmm. like this. So this is why like, I'm thinking like a physics-based game. Because Mario Maker exists, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What would you think? Like, so looking at this stage now, 
would you play a Mario Maker with this engine? Ooh, yeah, yeah. It's like, look at what you have now. This is basically just blocks creating a stage. Mm -hmm. Very simple, but really fun platforming. And I wonder if Nintendo has plans to do that. I don't know. Given that like, they now have this engine remastered. Oh, god damn it. I feel like um, if they had plans to make a 3D Mario Maker, you would have thought they'd have put it out by now. But that's Nintendo, isn't it? Recently, they've just been like, fuck it, here's a new game. It drops in a week. Yeah. Like, oh, just... Well, even this collection was pr not a shadow drop, but get very little, like, oh, notice <laughs> for when it's coming out. But that's the game over right there. Um, but, yeah, like... I think because of everything that's been going on, it's been hard to know if games are going to get delayed on short notice. And you've seen a lot of games announce release dates this year and just, oh, no, no, we can't get it done because, like, COVID and all the working from home and everything. And that's completely fair enough. Like, I never expect, like, a game to be, um, you know, unsafe to work on or whatever to make sure it hits a, a just a nebulous deadline. Lucas Tart to Smash fans. Oh god, yeah. Um, the amount of people yelling at Sakurai for not being at the office <laughs> to make the next Smash Bros. It's like, like fuck fucking off. hell. Um, but yeah, like, like no, no one's job is worth their life. It's not. They're a fucking firefighter. It's not. Yeah, like, obviously emergency services are, are different, um, but we're well, expected. That's why you get hazard pay. Yeah, exactly, and that's you know that's a job that you choose to get into. It's like working on an oil rig. You get paid so... You get compensated so well because there's a risk that you might fucking die. Yep. Teachers don't go to work expecting to die, man. Right, you're right in America. Smash Bros. DLC. You don't expect to get your ass kicked. Oh, no. By Disney. Oh, sorry, Lucas. I bounced off the edge, for fuck's sake. And I'm hoping, given that how ubiquitous water is in this game, at some point you do get the ability to double jump out of the water. Because jumping into the water and having to slowly swim all the way around... Carl, welcome to I the game. I can see that shit getting annoying. Carl, welcome to the game. No, I'm joking. I think, get... I think the rocket nozzle does um, shoot you up out of the water. You'd hope it would. Oh, God. And, like, yeah, that's the you... thing is, I... Um, for anyone wondering why I'm not going and, like, 100%ing the levels, um, I can't remember exactly because I've not looked up guides or anything for this game. I'm just playing, like, as I naturally would. Um, just when you see something new or interesting. Yeah, I'm just kind of following the story in hopes that that's the quickest way to get the nozzles. Because then it'll make going back for old shines even easier. Ah, you're a Super Metroid it. Oh, oh no, you no, no, no. It <laughs> it's like, don't do it again, Mario. Just roll in. So what do you think about a, a Super Mario Maker 3D? That'd be awesome. Engine? That would be, like, the only thing I think I'd appreciate more is a Legend of Zelda Maker. Uh, even if it was yeah. just a Legend of Zelda Dungeon Maker, I'd still love that. Just, just to make those shrines, those puzzle shrines. Yeah, like that would be so cool. But um, so that's what. Okay, then. Like so you look, looking at that, oh. looking at that stage, and it is just a series of blocks. Yeah, and I. And that and would be the half fast way to do it, for sure. No, you put skins obviously on, on it and um, things like that. But just looking at that and thinking, that looks super fucking fun. Yeah. And it's really simple, and you could even have like the mechanic they have in the uh, Mario Maker, the 2D one, mm -hmm. where you can change the level. Like, oh, you do this level with the flood, you do this level with Cappy. Yeah, because like obviously uh, Mario Maker 2, with all the updates, especially, like there's so many power ups that you can do, and there's and like yeah, give people you can space entire stages around one power up, like you know a fucking platformer does, or combine both, or do both. So, yeah. You've got the flood, and then you've got to switch to Cappy and make that choice. Mm, I'm yeah, just spitballing like, it, right? You could do that. You could have it like, oh, a Cappy power up drops halfway through the level and changes things up. I think Cappy would be really hard to do, though. Uh, oh my god, I fucked that up straight away. Uh, Cappy would be <laughs> oh hard god. to do because then you'd have to put in other elements for him to capture to then use in the level. Maybe, yeah. Um, well, like, they've already got all those um, resources lying around somewhere, but they do. just looking. The, this stage, more than any, has made me think that would be a really good idea. Mm. And um, It's using certainly that possible, as a, for sure. And using it, license to print money. Like, look at what they've done with fucking Dreams. Mm. Like, like, if Dreams that, is possible, then a Mario Maker 3D is possible. That is, that it would be a license to print money, like, it look would. at it. That Mario Maker was already popular. 
Like, keep in mind as well that this is, what, a 20-year-old game? And it still yeah. controls almost flawlessly. You say that right now, Carl. I know, like... But I mean in terms of, like, um, just the way Mario controls. He is, like, he is pinpoint accurate. Yeah. Maybe not in your hands, because it's been a while since you played the game. It has. I mean, I'm playing, like, an hour a week Master. now. So hopefully people will forgive that. But um, from what I've seen, like, in regards to, like, speedruns and stuff in Mario 64... Oh, yeah. That game is about as me mechanically precise as it gets for a platformer. Yeah. It really is. Like, you look at the shit that they can pull off when they know what they're doing. And in that vein, is that like a jumping off point? Is there a. Um, what game would you want uh, to have just a physics sandbox in? Probably. Oh no! Oh, oh Luke! No! 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 <laughs> oh, for oh. Sake. Mario just like re entering the Earth's atmosphere oh, ass first. Mario, no. You know, as he fell all the way down there as well, his balls just like slipped out. Just <laughs> exposed to everyone. Oh, God. Luigi just got a little shot. Oh, you said um, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah, so that, what you that's think what I was like halfway a... through saying before I absolutely just failed. slid off the edge like an idiot. Like, that'd be Zelda awesome because the, the physics are so fun to mess around with in that game as it is. They are. Like, that game is almost a fucking just physics sandbox simulator as it is anyway. Hmm. But like, I would love to see like the various interactions of just like, oh yeah, let's see what happens if I put like can increase the power of the bombs. Yeah. And then increase uh, launch like various aspects of the atmosphere, <laughs> uh, or various aspects of the environment into the atmosphere. Yeah. And I was actually seeing like um, things that you can do. And one thing that like, I think it was like an IGN video of like, oh, like ways that Breath of the Wild is still super fresh now. Uh, one thing was, oh yeah, you just drop a load of like, oh fuck's it. At right. least I got the one up. I'm not going to go for that one up again because it slows me down. But every time you get it though, it means that you get a free life. No, it you does. Get... I get a free try, but it also means I have to stop trying to be fast and go for that very specific corner. Maybe that's why it's there. It's the betray I'm not sure. It is. Me. So what you were saying then? Um, IGN? Yeah, and the, the one idea that I've never thought of in Breath of the Wild was like, oh, go in with a bunch of elemental weapons all with a bunch of Korok leaves and just drop them all in the camp and let the the, like, the cobblins run riled with them. Oh, just to see what happens. Yeah. Because they can pick up random weapons, can't they? Yeah, yeah so you can just things... drop like eight Korok leaves in front of like the camp and just see what happens. Because the... Um, that game, I, I'm going to win our playthrough, which we will get back to at some point when the dark times end. Well, that's a bit difficult for us right now, isn't it? It is, because like things just keep getting worse. Liverpool's on the verge of another lockdown. It is. <laughs> Like at, but, um, at this time of recording, like Liverpool is potentially going into a full lockdown again. But how many things did I do? Did you say in response to them? I'd never thought of doing that. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm that looks awesome. Wait. Uh, what? Just for your coins, man. What's the point? Be back. Here? Is it? Just get. Your, I think it's just get your coins. Let's kill them all and see what. Those things are. Those things are adorable. I think they're like Galoombas, not Goombas, but Galoombas. Ah. Just stick to Goombas, man. But there's Goombas in this game. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure, anyway. Because when you've got a design that strong and that iconic, don't mess, don't mess it up. Oh, is this a, is this a spawner? It may be. Yeah, sure it is. Oh, God, run. <laughs> they come forever. I don't know what the no point escape. of that is other than to throw you off, then. Maybe there's, like, a secret little uh, thing in there. That's why I said, like, Mario Maker. Because you know, in a Mario Maker level, um, that would just spawn like 50 Bowsers. <laughs> yeah. Like the flying Bowsers with the, uh, the was it, the Star Rods? Oh, all sorts That's of what, bullshit, that... yeah. Like the Bowser also... with like other things stacked on top of it, where they've all got fucking wings and shit, and yeah. I'll never forget though, the, uh, the introduction, how that was introduced, and it shows you like Mario in the boot, inside the flying car, yeah. with a fire flower. And it's like, oh my god, what are you supposed to do against oh, this man? Carl, let's stop. He's so and powerful. Just jump. I can de I can get it this time, Carl, I believe. There we go. Like that was way more of a ball eight than I made it because yeah, I kept going for that one up. And it slowed me down. It's like, no, Mario. You if you don't die, you don't need that one up. It's fine. The betrayer one up. Is that obviously I did get the mushroom and get to the end, but then I was like too focused on trying to get quick momentum and it fucked me up and like it's alright, yeah. I understand. 
I'm yeah. sure there's someone in the comments saying that they could have done it better. Like, I'm sure so, a lot of people could have done it better, but you know what? That's not their playthrough. Yeah, this is our playthrough. Fuck you. We do what we want. Like, I die as many times as I want on my playthrough. It's my channel. So, <laughs> Mario Carl, I believe now it's time to, like... There we go. Red coins of the pirate ship. So we get to explore Pinna Park a little bit. Hell yeah. This place looks awesome. That again, like, oh. you can see the very simple geometry, but... It's just very colourful and bright and like consistent art style throughout, and I very much like that. Is there like, a hotter take than people who say games like this are terrible because they look bad? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, is there any take where you look at the person and go, you are just so boring? Yeah. The people who are like, I only play COD and Gears of War. Like, like the people who are complaining I, I, about Halo. I Halos. don't play kiddie games. It's like, fuck off. Like the people complain about the new Halo game because it's got colour in it again. Yeah. Because, oh, it looks shit. And it goes, no, it looks, it's got a unique art style and they've finally gone back to it. It does, but it did look a bit blocky for my liking. Oh, yeah, like the actual game looks terrible, but the fact that it had colour in it is what some people took specific offence to. Yeah. It's like, I don't think anything, in gaming at least, and there's a no gaming opinion that shows more like micro penis energy than Nintendo games are kid games. Yeah. Because, well, I'm just going to go hacks. Um, I remember my uh, Pokemon is the example I like to use of Sword and Shield. Mm. Uh, I turned around on that game like twice, I think. Where <laughs> when it first came, first was announced, like, oh yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Can't wait, a new Pokemon game. Can't wait to play that one. That's going to be super fun. Yeah. Then there was all the stuff about, oh, they're cutting all these Pokemon out. Mm hmm. And then I was like, oh, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> then I saw how angry people got in response to that. And the fact that, like, sending developers death threats and throwing screaming adult man tantrums yeah. over the fact that their their favourite Pokemon's not in the game. I was like, fuck it, it's just a Pokemon game, it's not for me. And then I turned around again when I saw a friend of ours uh, come over to my house before the dark times. And he just had sword. And he was just sat there on his Switch... Going, oh wow, I've not seen this Pokemon before. I'm just absolutely fucking loving life. Yeah, because I remember you were very much like, nah, I'm not going to get Sword and Shield. Like, it doesn't look great, whatever. And then you just like, my mate was just sitting at my having fun. And I was like, oh. I'd like to have fun. That sounds great. <laughs> and just realised, yeah, this is, it's just a fun game to while away a couple afternoons. Yeah. And it's like, that, I think that, that moment of just like, yeah. He was having fun and I was not. That, yeah, that, that's all it is. It's just, like, look, it's a bit of fun. And the fact there are people who are still mad about it. Well, they could be having all that, uh, some fun playing Pokemon, but no, they're, they're happy to be angry on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, they are. Maybe that's their fun. That looks so sick. That looks so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> like the perfect front flip into, like, jetpack spray. And that's that just awesome. like, oh, it's Mario. Like, when Mario just pulls that shit off without thinking about it. He's just natural to him, isn't like, it? Look at that. And he just does that for fun. Like, just... I'm ah! sure... I'm sure some, like, shitty... It's probably game theory have worked out how high Mario can jump. Oh, I'm sure at some point they've worked that but, out. Yeah. Like, he's very easily clearing three to four times his, his own height. Mm -hmm. And that requires so much strength in the legs. <laughs> To jump higher than you are while doing a perfect backflip oh, while carrying people. while carrying enough water that it can be sprayed with enough force to lift you into the air. For like multiple times as well. So I think And he says we're here because he's doing it. It's not even like <laughs> strenuous it's not a strenuous activity for Mario. No. Oh, that was oh. Like, you die now. The timing. That was that was I so fucking brutal. I appreciate, though, that he's wearing underwear underneath his shell. <laughs> yeah. Skip the queue, Mario. Do it. Yeah! Fuck it. I love this music. Well, the music so far has every single one's been a winner. Mm -hmm. It's just like a nice, it's like a nice old-timey little song for a nice quaint little um, park, isn't it? It's nice. so I've, not heard a track, I've not heard a track yet that I didn't like. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, the camera's oh. your enemy. No! Yeah, the camera will betray you a bit in these games. The betrayer camera is fine. Like, you haven't seen behind the waterfall yet. Oh. What a great song. Oh, Mario! Like, what's a song from video games that you never fucking get sick of? Um, probably Slide. 
or slider in Super Mario 64. Is that the da, 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 The one da, that I play da, in Smash Bros. all the fucking time. Da, da, da. That is a good one. How about That's you? That's a really strong one, actually. I think there's a couple, like, it's just some good music that I really do like. Mm. like Fighters, um, Fighter Z oh, is a game I play a lot of. And I, I, spent, I spent a lot of time in training mode. But there are still songs that I still get sick of hearing the riff over and over and over again. Right, yeah. As good as I think the music is. But like the cooler song, for example. But like there's songs, it's like Pokemon. Mm. Where it's just the battle song. Every time I hear it, I get hype. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how long the battle goes on, I'm still hype. Like your rival battle music when we've been playing Soul Silver. It was so good. Oh, man. I love that shit. I never get sick of that. Right, let's get across to the next one. Yeah. I know there's people, uh, there's a couple of people, oh yeah, Dark Souls music and stuff, I've heard it's quite good, but like that, I'm not the biggest fan of that series. Mm. Or of that type of music, like the orchestral music. Mm -hmm. It's not really um, uh, something I'm, I'm that big into. Like, it's, it's not the orchestra part that I don't like. It's like, you know, well, Mario Galaxy and Odyssey have been orchestrated in some Zelda games and stuff, but... I mean, like, dark, like gothic that, style that gothic of music. Fi like, feel to it, yeah. Like, it sets the tone, but it's not... I wouldn't say it's music that I particularly yeah, like it's, that it's, much. Yeah, it does set a very good tone, but yeah, it's very atmospheric. Like, similar to, like, Doom. Where Doom soundtrack is amazing. I don't think I listen to it all the time. Uh, not all the time, but I do like cracking out every now and then when I'm in the right mood. And when I'm playing that game, I don't think I've ever found myself getting sick of it. No. Because it is, it's contextual, so based on how much arse you're kicking, um, affects what you hear. Oh, does it? Yeah, does it kick in more when you're doing well? Which is why it was great, where you had all the reviewers saying, the game's really good, but you can barely hear Mick Gordon's um, soundtrack in this <laughs> one. So when Doom Eternal came out, a load of reviewers were complaining that, oh, in the first game, uh, Mick Gordon's soundtrack was ever-present. It's not so much in this game, it's like, yeah, it's based on how good you're doing. Oh, man. That's rough. It's the same thing with Devil May Cry. That happened as well. Oh, Devil really? Devil May Cry soundtrack. Um, you don't actually hear the lyrics until you get at least a B rank in combat. And so many journalists say, uh, it's strange that the song they used to advertise it, uh, Devil Trigger, you never actually get to hear the lyrics in game. It's like you do if you're actually decent <laughs> at it. So I was wondering about that because I did, like, I'm not great at that game. I did wonder, like, sometimes I'll hear the Devil Trigger, like, fully play and other times I wouldn't. The most annoying part about it is, though, that um, it stops when you're playing Bloody Palace mode. Um, you only get to hear the first 30 seconds of it oh, for almost every stage in Bloody yeah, Palace. Yeah, because, because it, it doesn't get time to kick in, does it? Because each uh, part, like each room is so small. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of annoying when you have that. Like, so kind of like a Bloody Palace thing of it's just, yeah, we have uh, all the rope. Um, when you beat it the first wave, you get like a 10 second breather and then the next wave comes in. Yeah. And they just spawn in and the music stays in the background. Oh, oh no, 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 no! Oh! oh, no! Oh, the panic. I think I pressed X in panic and swapped my nozzles. Oh, Lucas, we've all been there. We've all panicked and swapped our nozzles before. We have. But the thing about Mario is at least that it's like fun and satisfying to get back up. Oh, yeah. And like half the fun of like platformers is mastering the mechanics. Yeah. And I struggle to think of a game that just has more solid platforming than Mario. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, it is. And in regard, and even just talking about like, how good the character feels to control. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not even the biggest fan of the uh, 3D Mario games. Yeah. I, uh, I think I talked about my experience with this series. Like I played Mario 64 a little bit. Mm. And even then, I know how good Mario is to control. How do I? Those things look awesome. I don't know how I attack them from down here. So I think I'm gonna have to uh, jump underneath. Up underneath. Yeah. Because they seem like it's very difficult to go past them without getting hit. Yeah. And then, oh dear. But I might have to. We never can know. you spray them from here? You can't spray the nozzle, can you? Uh, no. That's a shame. You could probably try like, your little double jump. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. There we go. There we go. Like, how hard is he hitting? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like he's uppercutting. Oh, like, get wrecked. That fucking hell, that boot. That big old boot. That big Mario boot. Cause I'm thinking like the only game where I felt a platformer where it's like, this feels almost perfect. Mm. In regards to what it's setting out, it's achieving what it's set out to. And this is a weird pull. Okay. But Lucas, I'm thinking you play this game as well, Doritos Crash Course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where 
despite being ostensibly a shitty cash-in game to sell Doritos. Well, what it, it was be... was like, apparently it was a fan competition and it was literally just, we don't care, we're going to slap the Doritos name on whatever two games out of this competition are the best two games. So like, it's a weird thing of like, yeah, it's like free promotion for Doritos kind of game, but at the same time, the competition was make the guest the best game and the best game will win. So it's like, it's a really weird point of, yeah, it is a free game given out by Doritos as an advertisement, but also it's like, really good. A, it's a really good game that like the people making it were very passionate about. And if no one out there has played it, go play it. It is oh, no. mechanically one of the most technically sound um, uh, platformers I've played. It just feels satisfying to play. Yeah, it is. I think so. it's just running and jumping. Mm -hmm. But it feels so good. And landing those perfect jumps yeah. feels incredible. And like you get to a point in that game where if you play it, you are fucking motoring oh, yeah. through those stages. Yeah, Mario. Okay. Like it is up there with Trials HD for Ooh, this yeah. game. Just feels good to master the movement mechanics of. I guess that is another one, Trials. I feel like Trials, like it's it's strong, but uh, it's uh, not as intuitive. No, it's not. Something like. But Trials does feel good when you land like those perfect front flips. Mm-hmm. You ever landed what like when you do the really long jumps, you do a and you do like flip. four or five flips and land seamlessly directly on your wheels. That's, oh, feels so good. Um, so where did that? Oh, it spawned up there. Okay. So that's the one annoying thing that I found going back to the uh, 3D Mario collection is like, yeah, you collect all the eight red coins, but then the coin, the like the star or whatever will appear in a different part of the map and you've then got to go find it and you can die on the way and it's like, oh no. Oh no, and then you lose all your, uh, your coins. Yeah, and then you've got to go back and collect all the red coins again. Welcome to video games. Here we go. This is like, as you saw um, with the secret stage that I did uh, earlier, it was like, yeah, you can get to the very end, but if you die, you fucking start again, mate. 